Hey, what's up guys, Soli WD here, and today I'm doing a video review on the BenQ BL2711U. Now this 4K monitor can be found for around £410 on Amazon.co.uk and on Amazon, on Amazon USA for around $450. Now in case you're wondering why it's slightly expensive, that's because there's a few uh, features that this uh, monitor offers whereas others don't. So first of all, the resolution. So it's 3840 times 2160 at 60 Hertz. That's over DisplayPort and HDMI 2.0, both of uh, both inputs that it um, offers. You can also run it at 30 Hertz for some reason if you wanted to, and that can be run over the DVI port or the HDMI 1.4 port that's also provided. It has an aspect ratio of 16 by 9, a quoted um, response time around 12 milliseconds. It's an IPS panel, as I previously mentioned. It's also got two 3 watt speakers, and in terms of um, connectivity, uh, other than the um, inputs that I've um, mentioned, you've also got a four port USB 3.0 hub, two of which can be found on the left hand side and two are uh, underneath the monitor. Uh, there's also a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack and um, audio input. So in terms of um, all of these, these are pretty standard. However, the thing which really sets it apart is that it's made for designers. And when I say designers, it means that it comes with a CAD CAM uh, pre-calibrated profile and also um, is made for the, um, it is aimed at the sRGB and the Rec.709 color spectrum. So in terms of that, if you're a um, designer, then you might already be a little bit uh, more interested in this monitor over other monitors out there. So I'll get into the display quality in just a bit, but first let's talk about the build quality. Now the monitor doesn't look particularly great, simply because it's got massive bezels. Now the bezels are pretty thick um, and um, pretty deep, uh, should I say, simply because of um, the panel looking a little bit indented in terms of the uh, bezel. So it's got a full black, um, a non-glossy matte um, bezels all the way around, and then you've got a pretty nice stand at the bottom. Now the stand provides full height adjustment, pivot and you can rotate it all the way around 180 degrees um, and adjust it as you would uh, as you'd expect from a designer point of view. Now in terms of the buttons I wasn't a big fan of this and I'm pretty sure business professionals would also agree with me but um, the it's got touchscreen buttons. Now the touchscreen buttons in all honesty are pretty responsive I've got no complaints in terms of that but I just didn't like the fact that there's uh, touchscreen buttons included rather than uh, physical um, uh, buttons. Now the buttons illuminate these little LEDs at the bottom and then you can um, go into the on, um, OSD. Now the OSD is pretty thorough you've got every single option pretty much that you'd expect. You've got PIP and PBP mode uh, that you can go, uh, you can enable depending on what source you have. In here in the picture I've got the brightness set pretty low just for the camera to pick it up properly. Uh, contrast is um, on default at 50, sharpness on 10 um, and um, which I would ar argue to say sharpness you could potentially bring it down to uh, to around 5 just depends on your, your setup. In terms of the picture advanced mode, um, you'll be able to see that I've got it right now on sRGB mode, but you can see over here there's a few uh, different modes which are pre-made. So the CAD CAM mode, uh, animation mode, are, are the ones that I would say that professionals would potentially want to use. Other than that, uh, you've got the standard mode um, and the user mode, uh, which are ones that I would say uh, people who are um, more, well, less professional in less, not less professional field uh, might want to use. But for the sake of this, this video I'm going to put it on sRGB mode because it actually looks pretty good and I'll get into that in just a bit. Display mode you can change it in terms of how it looks like you can even set it to almost like a 22 inch monitor um, um, and going um, under you've got the audio settings, system settings which you can um, customize the, the, the keys, ergonomics which is, I'll get into it in just a bit, there's a small little sensor which um, recognizes uh, how long you've been at the monitor. So essentially this little sensor which hopefully the camera will pick up, yep there we go, this little sensor over here picks up how long you've been at the monitor and the light conditions uh, which are around you. In other words you can get a little reminder in order to uh, stand away from the desk for a little while to keep your, give your eyes a break and also in order to adjust the, the tone um, of the monitor in order to um, adjust to the ambient light conditions which are around you. So in terms of build quality and design, I must say that the design doesn't look great, but in terms of build quality and the features that are offered, I have no complaints whatsoever. 
Now let's go into, um, which is the most important part, is the picture quality. Now when I got it out of the box, I was straight away, I was very impressed. And then playing around with some settings, going into sRGB mode, going into user mode and reducing the, uh, the greens by uh, one notch, uh, sorry, two notches and reds by uh, uh, one notch, I found that the monitor is actually stunning uh, to look at. In terms of viewing angles, I've absolutely no problems. Uh, obviously, being an IPS panel, you'd expect that, but that's not always the case with some some um, panel manufacturers. I must say, in terms of the viewing angles, no problems. But then, in terms of the color accuracy and how uh, the monitor is portrayed, I must say, stunning, absolutely stunning. So, in this image, for example, you've got really deep blacks on the uh, top right-hand side where the sky is, and yet you've got a fantastic white uh, color by the the, the mountains. In terms of the contrast, you've got a really nice uh, contrast ratio that comes out. Obviously, it doesn't compete with some VA or MVA panels, but nevertheless, it looks fantastic. In this, email, in, in this image, I would say that you'd be looking out for the greens to be popping out and they're not washed out. And that's exactly what this monitor is able to reproduce. Moving on from there, just, going, uh, just flicking through to some of my normal um, pictures that I use for testing. Um, so this image or over here, normally you'd see some weird uh, glow on some cheaper IPS panels or uh, TN panels. But over here you've got a really nice reproduction of the city, or how I like to call it, of the lava <laughs> that's, um, that's in, this, um, in this valley. And then you've got a fantastic colour reproduction throughout the image. Moving on to another picture, this one is a great example of a, a good contrast ratio and um, colours to be popping and that's very much the case with this monitor. It's able to reproduce fantastic colour a colour spectrum and given the fact that it's pre-calibrated to the sRGB uh, standard, it's no surprise uh, that, that we're seeing it here. Now of course if you're going to be working in an Adobe RGB or DCI-P3, I think you'll find it um, not to be hitting those, those numbers but nevertheless in terms of just the raw um, color output, just at least from my perceived uh, experience and believe me I've gone through around 100 plus monitors, I must say it is fantastic. Now it wouldn't be a totally dubbed review if I hadn't um, covered the gaming. Now of course this is not a monitor that's aimed at gamers at all, but it's something I always like to mention just in case someone wants to just casually game. Let's say you, you've, um, I don't know, you want to test out a game you've just developed or, or even if you've just designed it, or if you just want to casually game um, but yet want a, four, a nice 4K looking monitor. And I must say I was actually positively surprised. Um, so I've got the uh, monitor set on, um, uh, AMA premium, so you've got three modes, and the premium is the, the, the most, the highest mode, which normally brings out a lot of inverse ghosting. In this case, yes, there is a small amount of ghosting, which potentially the camera will pick up um, on this wall over here, but in honesty, it is very minimal. Now, the response time monitor is pretty, f it, it is felt to be quite slow. The 12 milliseconds is pretty accurate to, to how, it's, um, how it actually feels. In terms of the input lag, there's a little bit of input lag as well. So, of course, if you're a competitive gamer, you're never going to go for this monitor anyway. So I can't suggest it for competitive gamers, such as ones who are playing Counter-Strike or, or similar games. But those who are playing more casual games or want some stunning uh, colours uh, whilst looking at their games, then a game like, let's say, Battlefield or... Um, uh, God, I don't know, Fortnite or something like that will be absolutely fine. So in terms of gaming performance, I was actually impressed. Um, it's not obviously a gaming panel, but it can be used for casual games. So that's pretty much it, guys. I'm in all honesty, I've looked at the market and I looked at um, IPS 4K monitors and they come in around 320, 330 pounds up to 400 pounds. Now, not all of them are made to look as good. Now, specs are just one thing, but the actual uh, test result or my, my experience from the monitors um, is that it's not what you read on the manufacturer's spec sheet is what you get. However, in this case, BenQ have done a fantastic job. From top to bottom, I've got absolutely no complaints, even at its price range. Normally, BenQ monitors are relatively expensive, but in this case, I can see why you're paying that little bit extra more versus its competitors. It's really a nice color reproduction that you get through the panel. You've got a great set of uh, features to use from and pre-calibrated modes that, that you can literally set up and go. So there we go guys, I would definitely recommend this monitor, it's a great monitor for the intended, for the intended use, definitely suggested, and that's it. If you want to purchase the monitor, you can help a brother out by clicking the links in the description below, which will be the Amazon links uh, to the respective countries, it's in UK and US. Um, 
Other than that, favorite and share, subscribe, it always helps the channel grow. I can't stress it enough, I'm an independent, unbiased, unpaid, unsponsored reviewer. I just do this for fun and to educate people. So if you enjoyed it, it always helps. Alright guys, I've been totally dubbed, take care and bye bye.